have in my you are our maker and our keeper. You are the key of all our diseases and sicknesses. So, Father God, we ask you to touch in the mighty name of Jesus. Heal those that need healing. Make those that weak, make them strong. And, Father God, bring us back in submission to your will and your ways, Father God. Teach us how to do the things that you want us to do without wrath and doubt. Father God, we love you, we praise you, and we magnify you. And Father God, we ask you to heal the sick and those that are lost. Father God, we ask you to bless and find their way. Because you said you are the light of the world, Master. So illuminate us, Master. Illuminate our feet. And Father God, we ask you to regulate our mind. Think our heart, Father God, but you say you see cause of men. And Father, if anything that's in there that's not of you or like you, Father God, we ask you to purge it, Father God, right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Fix it, Father God. And Father God, when we can no longer give you the praise here on this earth, we ask you to cross us over from earth to glory. You said you were going to dispatch angels from heaven. You were going to pass one hand, one foot on land, and another one on sea. You were going to declare time has been, shall be no more. In that minute and that hour, Father God, we'll be careful to give you all the praise.
coming from Romans 12, 1 through 3. Beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace of God, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according to as God has dealt to every man the measures of faith. May the Lord have a blessing on the reading of the doers of this word. Let us bow. Eternal and everlasting God, we come in the name of Jesus, still wanting to say thank you. Thank you, O God, for all of your many blessings. Now, God, we come calling on you because we need you. We need you, Master, like we never needed you before. We come asking, Master, for peace this morning. That peace when you was out on that old stormy sea, when the men marveled and said, what man of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? God, we're asking for that peace that surpasses all understanding. Now, God, we ask that you would touch us this morning. Lend us the visitation of thy Holy Spirit. Stop by, God, if you don't stay long. Realize, Master, if you stop by for a little while, then everything will be all right. We come asking that you would touch the one that's going to bring your word this morning. We ask, God, that you would crown him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Give him a word, Master, that somebody might fall out with their wicked ways and come running, what must I do to be saved? Then, God, we ask that you would just come on in this place. Have thine own way. And then, God, when it's all over down here, we pray, Master, that you would give us a home in thy kingdom where we can spend eternity. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Good morning. Yeah, he let the sun shine Don't y'all play with me. If you're going to sing, go ahead and sing. Oh, he rocked me. Cause he knew Is that your testimony this morning? Hallelujah! Sounds mighty good. Y'all just sang that some more. Oh, oh. What else did he do? Sounds mighty good. Thank you for the reminder this morning. Thank you for the reminder this morning. Thank you for the reminder this morning that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, 
Where would I be? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let, let me just do a good worship check. Is anybody glad to be in the Lord's house this morning? I, I want to make sure we're in the right place. I, I want to make sure I'm in the right place, a place of worship. Is anybody glad to be in the Lord's house and not ashamed of, to let the world know we're on the Lord's side and we love the Lord, heard my cry, and pitied my every one. Long as I live in trouble ride, I'll hate it through. Now, okay, okay, I don't want to pick you. I'm glad this morning. I'm glad this morning that Hicks, I'm glad this morning that Hicks Funeral Home didn't have to pick me up this morning. I'm glad this morning that Joan Stewart Marjorie didn't have to pick me up this morning. I'm glad to be in the Lord's house. And now that I'm here, I might as well praise his holy name. I might as well give him a hallelujah and a thank you, Jesus. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I don't, I don't mean to be selfish, but, but my soul, my soul cries out hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. I don't mean to be selfish. Is there any saved folks in the house today? Are there any saved folks in the house today? The psalmist said, let the redeemed of the Lord. Okay, that, that was sermon number one. Thank you. I brought a little church with me this morning. I need to let you know, I, I just brought a few spiritual matches with me this morning. Yeah. you waiting to have church I, I just need some folk who brought a little church with you when you begin to think of his goodness when you begin to think of his grace you begin to think of his mercy and you begin to think if it had not been for the Lord on my side where would I be Thank you, thank you, Lono. Thank you, Lono. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You, 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 don't, you don't need to say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. And when you tell the Holy Spirit he's welcome in this place, don't sit down like you're wondering what's going to happen. Man, you don't know what might happen. The Holy Spirit is able to break yokes. It's able to change lives. God can do more before the preacher gets up than he could ever do in a lifetime. That's the kind of God we serve. Okay then, okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lono Choir, for ushering us into the presence of the Lord. And it's, it's up to us if we're going to worship him. Good to see everyone here this morning. As my good friend, Reverend Solomon Pfeiffer would say, good to see Lottie, Dottie, and everybody in the Lord's house this morning. Good morning, Lono. 
good morning to our friends there who are in virtual space. Grace and peace be multiplied to you today on this glorious Sunday morning, the fourth Sunday in the month of March. God has been good to us. Praise his holy name. Let me begin our announcements, emphasis, and observation this morning. Please take your pencil and paper out, write it down, because sometimes I think I'm just wasting my time with some of these announcements. We are doing everything in our powers to get the information out, and somehow we're allowed to slip through. So please jot this down. Uh, this is an announcement for our LBC Mass Choir. Uh, we'll be measured for the new robes. And that's one day only. Amen. Amen. That's one day only. That's Thursday, April the 4th, 2014, starting at 4 o'clock p.m. So for us who are early comers, you can come at 4 o'clock. And for those of us who are working, and you can come at regular rehearsal time, 6 p.m. until finished. The owner of the road company is from North Carolina. We'll be doing the measurements, so it's imperative that you are present and on time. April the 4th, choir. April the 4th. That's a Thursday. Early commerce, 4 o'clock p.m. And then for the regulars, uh, if you would come during your regular rehearsal time at 6 o'clock p.m., that please govern yourself accordingly. Puppeteers and Easter speech practice next Saturday, March the 30th at 1 o'clock p.m. Easter egg hunt after the practice. Parents, <laughs> hear me and hear me good. I didn't write this, but I'm going to read it. <laughs> Parents, do not drop your children's off. Amen. Amen. They ask, please do not drop off your children. Please stay with Ray Ray. <laughs> and your sweet baby, please stay here with them, OK? Amen. That's fair enough, isn't it? Stay, stay with your babies and accommodate our, our youth coordinators during that time. Okay, everybody give an announcement. I'm hearing a lot of stuff. Okay, I want to make sure y'all got it. All right, let me say this to my Lone Oak family. Thank you for traveling to Clark County on last Sunday. to the city of Arkadelphia, Arkansas, as we celebrated the installation of our Reverend, Reverend Ronnie Schubach Keener, our very own. Thank you, Lone Oak. You were so kind on last Sunday to put up with me for a few minutes of preaching and then to hear me again uh, the second service. And I say thank you for your patience and thank you for your consistency. Uh, next, no, no, I'm sorry. Pastor's Aid Ministry will meet after service, April the 7th, that's the first Sunday in the month of April, they're asking that all of the pastor's aid ministry uh, members would meet after the morning worship service in the fellowship hall. Please, ma'am, please, sir, please be there. Uh, the committee chairperson is asking if you would please meet with the pastor's aid ministry uh, the first Sunday in April. That's April the 7th in the fellowship hall. Let me say thank you for our Lone Oak Church family, uh, for those who were here on yesterday morning. Thank you for your spirit of hospitality. Thank you for being here uh, at yesterday morning at 9 o'clock, and I can't, I can't express it enough. Thank you so much for, for such a kind spirit. And I want to say this. It speaks volume of our congregation. Uh, in, in previous of our meetings, of section meetings, sectional meetings, uh, normally there's about 50 to probably maybe, and, and, and let me go back down, sometime 30 to 50 on a Saturday morning. But yesterday there was over 200 that gathered in the meeting. And I want to say thank you, Lord. I think it speaks volume of our congregation. And I want to thank you so much for your patience and thank you for being here. Well, I need to tell you something. Thank you for coming on yesterday, but guess what? That's not how the story ends. <laughs> We, we've got one more day, Amen. and I've been announcing it for the last few Sundays throughout the month of March. We'll meet here this afternoon at 2 o'clock p.m. for the singing part of our Southwest District Association. So that means I've got to cut my sermon just a little bit short. 
but uh, so we can come back because we want to make sure that you're able to go and get you something to eat and come back and we will rejoice together and I want to encourage our church family to come back amen, amen. 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 I want to encourage our church family if you would to please come back uh, for that afternoon service here and I've, I've always been taught it's, 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 not, it's not even good. It's just not good. I believe 45 would say it's just not, it's not good. It's not so good at all <laughs> to have guests to come and we not be at our own house. Amen. 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 So I want to encourage you to be here uh, this afternoon at 2 o'clock. And uh, there's something that's very special. And this is going to take probably five minutes off of what I need to say today, but this is something that is extremely important in our church family today. And that is that we have our new members who have completed their uh, new members orientation successfully. And after, if you will, just hold your applause and we want to applaud our new members who are a part of our church family. It's over 20 and I'm going to need some of you deacons to help me out because I know there's some in the choir stand. So if you hold your applause and then we're going to give them out the end, okay? Okay, let's start with this. Will you help me please? Come on, Brother Brewer, Brother, Brother Floyd, because y'all can help me out here. Okay, we have Sister Justine Williams. It's okay. It's a like graduation. Brother Frank Williams, I think both of those in the choir stand will kill two birds with one stone. There's Sister Doris Williams in the choir stand. My God, they, okay. There you go. A Fernandez Williams, same. My God, look at the Lord. Well, at least they're busy for the Lord. Brother Jeremy Compton. Sister Jean Taylor. If they're not here, you can just bring it back to me. Sister Sharon Haynes, she's here. Thank you, deacons. Sister Sharita Adams. Okay, that's not Brother, Brother Gamble raised his hand. Sister Janice Corbett. Okay. Sister Tina Abner. Brother Anthony Abner. Brother Clayburn Pree. Sister Stacy Wiley. Sister Cynthia Daniels. Brother Marshall Williams IV. Ms. Mary. Sister Mary Ann Cullins. Amen. Sister Betty Morgan Peterson. Amen. Zachariah Lewis. Amen. Brother Zion Lewis. Amen. Sister Nakia Dansby. And Brother Reginald Dansby. Thank God for the addition to our church family. Let's give them a great big Lone Oak Baptist Church welcome. Welcome to our church family. They have com successfully completed our new members class. And we thank God for all of our new members. One of the things the Bible speaks about in the book of Acts is that the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. And we bless God for all of our new members. Let's ask God's blessing over the offering this morning. And let me say this thank you to our contributors, those who continue to sow into this ministry virtually. We bless God for you. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the gift of giving. We thank you for this time of worship. We ask now that you'll bless the givers. We ask now that you will bless the gifts. Lord, bless Psalm 30, Psalm 6, and Psalm 100 fold. Let this money be used for his intended purposes, for his uplifting of thy kingdom here on earth. It's in the precious and matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. All right.
musician have just a little bit of time to just praise the Lord. Yeah, that's just their way of telling God thank you. There's an appeal that needs to be made. I was not aware of it, but let's go ahead and get that done, and I'm going to go to the Word of God shortly after that, okay? All right. My God. All right. <laughs> hey, thanks, Pastor. That protocol has already been established. Uh, to the parents of LBC, have an announcement uh, in regards to graduation. And I've been told I got to stick to the script, so I'm going to go ahead and read it. <laughs> the announcement, uh, this appeal to all our church members. If you have a student or if you have a student graduating from pre-K, kindergarten, middle school, high school, <laughs> college, or a trade school, we need your graduation information. Please get your information to myself or our sister Colette uh, Mitchell 
by March 31st. The contact information should be on the screen. Uh, well, see me after church, we'll, we'll get you the information. If you, uh, if you can't get your information to us by March 31st, the final date that we will be accepting information is April 14th. Keep in mind, we have to have these deadlines. This allows us to get everything compiled so that we can properly recognize the accomplishments of the graduates. For any questions or concerns, please see Colette or myself. Thank you in advance. Have a blessed day. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you. Let's go to God in prayer. Our Father, we thank you now for the privilege of preaching. We thank you for this worship experience thus far. We spent our time in study, but now we need your spirit to take control of this house, to lead God and direct. We spent our time in prayer. Now we're asking for power that'll destroy yokes, that'll change lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, if you have your Bibles, your iPad, cell phone, will you travel with us to the gospel of Jesus Christ according to Luke chapter 22? Verse 54 through verse 61, allow me to give you the short version of this sermon. From the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verse 54 through verse 61. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, this man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, thou art also of them. Peter said, man, I am not. In about the space of one hour, after another conf confidently affirmed saying of a truth, this fellow also was with him. He's a Galilean. Peter said, man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. That's enough to preach from. Let's be seated in the presence of the Lord. My short time of to speak, I want to talk about a lesson from Peter. A lesson from Peter. Thank you. Thank you to our youth ushers today who have served us. We bless God for you may be seated. Peter's transactions with Jesus and Jesus' transaction with Peter were second to none. Jesus meets him where he is, answering his questions pointing out his doubts. In the course of that time, Jesus is patient with Simon Peter. He's patient in his teaching and guiding him. 
Because Jesus wants Peter to become a steady, dependable leader for the early Christians and the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. A, a, a lesson from Peter, Simon Peter. That, that one, if you missed yesterday's sermon, which was confirmation to me, my good friend, Pastor Frankie Mitchell from the Haynes Chapel Baptist Church called him Popcorn Peter yesterday. And I said, man, he write in my message for tomorrow, but thank God there's a lesson from Peter. We can look, listen, and learn from Peter. Let's not get it twisted. Peter loved him some Jesus. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. Peter loved him some Jesus. And I believe if I pass the mic around the room today, there are some Jesus lovers in the house today who truly loves him with all your heart. And whenever the time presents itself, go back to chapter 22 and read it because, man, Luke takes us on an emotional roller coaster. He, he takes us to the point that he talks about the, the, the feast of the Passover. He talks about that first, the, the, the last supper, which is the first communion, how that Christ took the time and break bread and how he took that wine and began to say, this is my blood, which is going to be poured out for you. And, but, but, and, and I know we're looking forward to next Sunday, the resurrection, but I need to pause for a moment and tell you before there was a resurrection, there was a, there was a betrayal, there were some betrayals and a crucifixion. No cross, no crown. Uh, a cook has to spend some time in the kitchen. A good meal will, will have to spend some time. I, I know, I know we are used to this microwave stuff, but I'm talking about a good home cooked meal. I'm talking about that'll drive you from Fayetteville to Hope, Arkansas, just to have a one good cooked meal. I'm, I'm talking about one good cooked meal. I need some college folk that'll drive from Jonesboro to get home to go back to Jonesboro. That that'll leave Conway to come home to go back to Conway just for one good. Home cooked meal. Okay, okay, okay. It'll cause you uh, to try drive across country to, to, to experience a one good home cooked meal from mama's kitchen. I need to tell you something. Yes, you enjoyed that meal, but somebody had to labor. Somebody had to prepare. Somebody had to put some things together. Somebody had to go to Safeway. I'm calling it old school now. Somebody had to go to Safeway. Somebody had to go to Brookshire. Some, somebody had to go to Super Warren and spend some money in order for you to enjoy one good home cooked meal. I need some folks that's in the house that know that, that, that we're going to celebrate cel uh, uh, resurrection next Sunday but somebody paid a price and his name is Jesus Christ uh, don't, don't get it twisted I think I need to tell you uh, for these saved cute handsome folks that's in the house if you never failed God this message is not for you uh, if you've done everything correct since you've been saved I need to put this disclaimer, this sermon is not for you. Yeah. To, to my friends there in virtual space, if you've been holy all your life, this, this message is not for you. But if you've ever promised God something, but, but it, it, it just didn't find, find yourself, you just didn't complete that work, th th this message is tailor-made for you. God promised God something, but not done it. Just didn't do it. This message is for you. If you made vows and commitments to the Lord and fallen short, if you've struggled with temptations, if, if you've been plagued with condemnation and guilt over sins from your past that, that have defeated you, then today I offer you genuine hope straight from the throne of grace through Jesus Christ. I think I need to tell you that you can learn a lesson from Peter. Uh, Jesus told Peter while he was conversating, he said, Peter, Satan desire 
to sift you like some wheat. Uh, he, he desired to crush you. He, he desired to squeeze you. He, destroyed, he desired to utterly destroy you. My friend, I need to tell you something what Jesus reminded us there in the gospel of John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief coming not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I got a bit of good news for you. But he said, but I come that you may have life and that more abundantly. That means if I've got to pay the ultimate price on a hill called Calvary, I come that you may have life and that more abundantly. He tell you there's a word from the Lord today. Uh, Peter, my brothers and sisters, uh, was no perfect man. Uh, Jesus says, he desires to sift you like wheat, sonny boy. <laughs> Peter says, let me tell you something, Jesus. Can I just paraphrase a little bit? Let me tell you, lay my turn. He said, Jesus, I'm your ride or die. Jesus, you've been too good to me. I'm your ride or die. Try me and see. See what I can be. Completely yours. Everything I am, everything I got, I'm yours, Lord. Jesus said, you need to be ready for trouble. Because trouble coming our way. Jesus tell him, I tell you what, let's go to the garden and just pray with me one hour. His rod or die. You, 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 you can tell when, when you got a real sleeper, when you see a joker put his hands together like y'all do some Sunday mornings and put your hand, you can get some good, you can get a good power nap. All this screaming and jumping I'm doing on Sunday morning, but, but how is it that you can sleep when Jesus needed you the most? Peter, James, and John, right? The, the Bible says that Jesus is praying so intensely that the sweat began to come down as great drops of blood, and yet there's, he said, could not you stay awake for how is it that you can go clubbing? How is it that y'all can go traveling up and down the highway, byways, eight and nine hours, 12 and 13 hours, shake your thing like nothing, come back to God's house, one hour in you. Y'all not talking to me. How is it you can sit in the bleachers, those hard bleachers at a football game for three hours, come to God's house for one hour, padded pews, cold air, and can't give him one I knew y'all get quiet right long in here. How is it you can drive across the country for a basketball game, then come back home? You spent all kind of hours, your team lost, and you can't give him. <laughs> work on your job, not just eight hours. You ask boss, can I get a little OT? You work 12 hours from seven to seven, and you can't give God. I knew that. Oh. Peter. Peter, I, I know I just don't feel like going to church today. I know that too. He didn't feel like going to Calvary either. Fact of the matter, he told his father, this is a bitter cup here. Do you, do you know what he saw in that cup? Man, it wasn't that night. That cup was bitter. If it be possible, let this cup pass from me. <sighs> While in the garden, there's one who came up to go and grab Jesus. <laughs> Bruh Peter. I, I, I've heard folks say a switchblade, but Peter must have been a bad fella. It wasn't no switch, switchblade. He pulled out his sword. Now, don't you know if you fast with a sword, you can cut a joker ear off? But... Now, now, I thought rifle man was bad. Click, 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 click. But man, Peter was so bad, he took the sword and whacked the fella ear off real quick, fast, in a hurry. And somebody said, nah, 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 nah. Na 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 na, hey, 
goodbye. Jesus said, Peter, put your sword up. That, that's not what I'm here for. And you may not know it, but there's a Peter that's on your road. I just hope it's not you. There's some folks in there that cut you up every which way but loose. They say, that's why I'm preaching. I'm trying to help work it out. It's called job security. Don't you think all these folks, okay, let me go on. Uh, my good friend remind me, member of this church remind me that, that Judas and Peter both denied Christ. My good friend remind me that, that Judas did it out of wickedness. Peter did it out of fear. He was afraid. So, Pastor, what happened? I got it. I got it. Like, okay, I know it. I know it. So, so Peter, Peter. <sighs> Jesus put the ear back on. <laughs> what a miracle. Because had that been me, and I already know you all going to take me <laughs> to the big house. I'm cutting your ear, your toe, your fingers, and everything else off. Since I got to pay the time, I, will, I might well go ahead and do the crime. <laughs> but Jesus, with his loving kindness, scratched that out the records. Jesus, with his loving kindness, took time to put the ear back on. What a miracle. And said, whatever you're going to do, you need to do it quickly. They bring him to Caiaphas' house. Here Peter is. Here's Brother Peter. Here's the heart of my message right here today. While they are standing around the fire. That's the first message today. Let's build your own fire. Learn how to build your own fire. What, what do you mean by build my fire? My, my mother said it like this. My mother said, make sure that your salvation is not predicated on me and your father. You need to know the Lord for yourself because one day your mother and father will be gone and then you've lost salvation. She called it kinfolk salvation. There are some folk who have kinfolk salvation. As long as mom and dad is there, they've got it. But what about when mom and dad is gone? Do you still have joy down in your soul? Joy like a river. Uh, uh, build your own fire. In other words, my fire is not predicated on the choir. Thank God for LBC Mass Choir who sings out of their soul Sunday morning. But I need to tell you something. My fire is not from this choir. I had my fire this week when there was no choir around. I need some folk who know how to build their own fire. What you going to do when you have your fire predicated on your preacher? One day your preacher may not be there, but when you got your own fire, the fire will keep on burning. Oh, praise his name. Learn how to build your own fire. Uh, oh, sure it is, sure it is. What, what, what? Peter, I'm beginning to think, how did I even get here? How did I get here? His mind began to go back and he said, Jesus told me Satan desired to sift me like wheat. Brothers and sisters, here's the second point, not only build your own fire, take heed to God's word. Jesus had already told him. He had already warned him. He had already instructed him. Satan desired to sift you like wheat. So in other words, you've got to be cautious. You've got to be vigilant. You've got to be sober. You've got to be alert. That's why I sent you my word. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You need, we need the word of God. Your word is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. Your word, Lord. What, what was Jesus saying? Jesus said, Peter, you're not looking at the big picture. See, Peter... You're looking at the picture right now, but Satan is looking down the road. What you're fighting, Peter, is not another man. 
I think Paul told us best there in that letter to the church at Ephesus chapter 6 verse 12. He said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Don't stop there. I feel a preach right about long in here. But Jesus said, yeah, that's what the enemy wanted to destroy you. But he said, but I pray for you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh y'all didn't even catch that. Yeah. It's one thing when your mother and your father pray for you. It's one thing when the preachers say a prayer for you. It's one thing God to thank God for our deacons. It's good when our deacons pray for you. But honey, let me tell you something. When Jesus prayed for you, the man from Galilee, the man that can walk the waters, the man that can spit on the ground and open blinded eyes, when he prays for you, when that man prays for you, he, do, do you not know he prayed for you? He's concerned about you. He's concerned about your uprising. He's concerned about your downsetting. He prayed for me. The young lady says, you, you one of them. Look, look what Peter's told the woman. I know him not. I don't know him. I do not know him. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? I do not know him. Peter, really? Did you forget? Did you forget the, the retreat? That, that was hell in Caesarea Philippi. When I asked whom do you say that the son of man am? Peter, it was you that said, thou art the Christ, yeah. the son of the living God. Yeah. Peter, do you remember when those other disciples turned and walked no more with me? And I looked and turned and said, are you going to go also? Peter, it was you that said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. We are sure, we are convinced you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Peter! When your mother-in-law was sick with a fever, when I came to her house and touched her, then she was healed. Did you forget me, Peter? <laughs> Peter, that night when I told you, when you said, Lord, if it be me, if it be you, bid me to come. When you said, come, I walked on the water. Peter, did you forget? Lone Oak, did you forget the last time you had bills and you didn't have enough money to meet your bill and the Lord came through? How could you deny him? Okay, you got plenty of money. What about when your body was rocking with pain? The doctor didn't know what was going on. The nurse didn't know what was going on. But then the Lord intervened on your behalf. How can you say, I don't know him? My single mothers, whenever you had more bills than you had money, you didn't know how you were going to make ends meet. Didn't God make a way out of no way? You didn't know how you was going to make it through 2020, 2021, 2022. But look at you, you made it to 2024. God keeps on blessing you over and over and over again. How could you ever say, I don't know him? Now that's some folks you don't want to know. There are some folk you wish you can just drive away. Oh, Lord, yeah, I may be one of those. But Jesus is not the one that you want to say, I don't know him. But brothers and sisters, that was out of fear. Uh, I know there's a term that we used. It was around 2020. It was called social distance. Y'all remember that when we went through that? Yeah, boy, social distancing. It, it, we, we went through social distancing where we would stay away from folks so that we didn't want to get contagious. We didn't want to catch anything that was contagious. Well, I'm going to tell you something. If you want to get contagious, you ought to hang around Jesus. It's all right to be with him. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Peter was around the wrong crowd. You can't continue to hang around folks. I don't know what I, I don't know which way. I don't, I don't want to offend nobody. I, I, I don't want to make y'all mad. I got a few more minutes. I, I, I can't ride to church with a smoker. 
and expect to get out of the car and not smell like smoke. Uh, the old, my, my, my grandmother didn't know, she didn't know a whole lot about theology, but she would say, birds of a feather. Peter was hanging around the room cry. They act like they didn't know him, so he said, I don't know him. I don't know him either. Peter, how could you this quickly? Out of fear. I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. No, I can't. I don't know him. And then in verse 58 and verse 59, he had the audacity to say, I am not one of them. Doesn't it sound like us sometimes? I don't know him. I am not one of them. Don't let us get us on our jobs. So-and-so, how was church yesterday? Who are you talking to? <laughs> I didn't go to church. Well, I thought you was a member of LBC. Yeah. I am not one of them. <laughs> In your pastor, Reverend Hill, I do not know him. <laughs> In verse 60, then he said, and I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know him. I'm not one of them. And I don't know what you are talking about. Now, let me, let me cut across the field, head to the house. Brothers and sisters, where do you stand with your Jesus? Is it the same stand that you take on Sunday morning, the same stand you're going to take on Thursday? Are you only a Sunday morning worship Christian? What about Monday? What about Tuesday? What about Wednesday? What about Thursday? What about Friday? What about Saturday? Do you know him? Are you a part of them? Or are you going to Nadia? The Bible says the third time when Peter said that, I like this because this is where... It's good news because all of us have sinned and have come short of God's glory. The Bible says, and Jesus looked at him. That's okay. Because Jesus looked at him. Jesus saw his past. Jesus saw his present. But Jesus also saw his future. And Jesus understood, that's why I'm going to Calvary to save Peter from fear. Oh, yeah, Peter been a brave fellow for a long time, but when folk were talking about taking the neck, Peter was like, wait a minute, I don't know him. That's why Jesus looked at him. Brothers and sisters, I need to leave this with you. Jesus is looking at us. Let me close it out with this story I heard. I once read a story about a revival in Ethiopia during the 1930s and the 40s. It was said that food was scarce because of the war. That was an Ethiopian Christian and evangelist who had to leave his family to find work. He was coming home after a year with his entire wages when some robbers took him and took his money. And when they released this preacher, he was extremely angry with God. He was upset with God and decided, I won't share Jesus with nobody else if this is the way you're going to do me. I will not share my Christian convictions with nobody else. He decided after getting home, driving home, he decided, I'm going to go by the house of the witch doctor. And have them to put a curse on the robbers. The witch doctor it was inside this dark room, long shaggy hair. The preacher walked in and as soon as the preacher walked in the door, the witch doctor noticed there was a higher power. He noticed something was different about this man. He demanded, he said, who are you with? Identify yourself. Tell me who you are with.
The preacher says, regardless, forget about it, never mind who I'm with. I need you to put a curse on the robbers who robbed me along the way. Which doctor looked at him, Dr. Dudley, and said, until you identify what powers you're with, I'm not going to do anything. It is said that this Christian evangelist was embarrassed and he tried to explain, I'm here for one reason. The witch doctor could not move forward, so the Christian again began to realize, I must confess that I'm with the name of Jesus Christ. This is a true story. It said The witch doctor said, no way. I have no power that supersedes the power of Jesus Christ. He's sovereign. He's Lord. He's King of kings. He's Lords of Lord. Uh, can I tell you what the evangelist did? The evangelist began to walk back. He said, never mind. I don't need your power. After all, the God that I serve, he's more than able. He know how to put bread on my table. He know how to supply my every need. I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, every now and then we get messed up. Every now and then we get it twisted. Every now and then we get we fall down, but I come to tell you what you gotta get back up and say, I stand in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, sometimes we get lonely along the way, but look back at a hill called Calvary, how he was wounded for my transgression, how that he was bruised for my iniquity, and the chest time of my peace was, was upon him by whose stripes I am healed. I know it's not Resurrection Sunday, but I got to tell you, he died. My Savior died, and they buried him in a bar or tomb, but that's not how the story ends. Oh, praise his name. He told him one day, just as Jonah was in the belly of the whale, three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. Matthew said he died. Mark said he died. Luke said he died. John said he died. But he got up with all power in his hand. Forgiving power, forgiving power, forgiving power, restoring power. Hallelujah. One of these mornings when he come back, I want to tell him thank you. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. Thank you for giving me another chance. Thank you for a brand new life. And I know he's all Y'all better come on. Y'all better come on before I preach myself into the next service. He walks with me. He talks with me. He rocks me in the midnight hour. He wipes tears from my eyes. I know he's all right. Y'all better come on here. All right with me, Jesus, my Rose of Sharon. Do you know him? The man from Galilee, the one that set me free. Do you know him? Yes, sir. this sanctuary as we extend an invitation today.
sanctuary, there is no greater love. Our Father and our God, we thank you today for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, and what our hearts have felt. God, we ask now that you would dismiss us from this place, but never from thy presence. Give us travel and grace as we travel to our various destinations. Bring us back in the next service at 2 o'clock. We ask that you would even bless, bless our guests as they travel along the way to come to this next worship experience. May the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest ruling about his for forever. Amen and amen. You are dismissed. I'll see you tomorrow.